Welcome, it's Ryan from Indie Music Videos TV. And uh, what I'm introducing today is a new segment we're going to have called 10 Questions. It's going to be very simple. Uh, I am going to have 10 questions for uh, bands, and bands are going to record their responses back uh, on their iPhone, on their video camera, whatever they have at their disposal. So we're going to try to make this really fun, then I'm going to edit it back. So with me, you're actually going to see some a very consistent attire <laughs> like I have on now, but this isn't about me. This is really about the bands, giving them some additional exposure. Uh, the questions are going to be consistent questions, so you're not going to have a real surprise on what's coming, but the surprise is going to be in the response to how the bands answer the questions. So, hope you all enjoy this. The more that um, you all like it, share it, send it out there, the more I'll do of these. So, uh, enjoy! <music> So take a couple minutes and just introduce every single person in the band. Hi, I'm JT, singer-songwriter, guitar player for Leona's Sister. Hey everyone, my name's Len and I play guitar for Leona's Sister. Good afternoon, my name is Deputy Dave Hanson and I play rhythm guitar with Leona's sister and harmonica and I sing a little bit as required, which isn't often because I'm not nearly as good a singer as Joyce. I'm Mark. I'm the drummer for Leona's sister. When I'm not busy playing with the band, I'm taking care of my own personal zoo here in Toronto. Hi, I'm Baz. When I'm not playing bass for Leona's sister, I'm here as a site coordinator at Shelter Valley Folk Festival. Let's start this off with uh, talking about your band name. Tell us a little bit about your band name, how you came up with it, and what exactly it means to you guys. Um, I have a sister named Leona, and she's pretty unique, so Leona's sister seemed like a great name for a band. Plus, my buddy at work thought it was a great name. All right, guys, so what is your ultimate goal with your music? What do you want to accomplish? Um, you know, I think everybody feels the same way. One of our main goals uh, is just to have a lot of fun with our music. Uh, we want to see how far we can take this project and uh, have fun along the way. Time to reflect. What song or artist were you listening to whenever you decided, yeah, i, I got to do some of that right there? I uh, probably would have been about five or six years old when one of, one of my sisters, I can't remember which one, had the 45 of... Uh, of Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry and just the intro guitar lick was so different to me and so loud and so exciting and so rock and roll and so different from the boring music that uh, that my parents listened to that I thought wow that electric guitar is a really cool instrument I really need to learn how to play one of those someday and someday I, I will. Into the Void by Black Sabbath and Lazy by Deep Purple. I think probably I was listening to uh, Deep Purple uh, that was what I was into when I was a kid that type of music so uh, Deep Purple. When I decided I had to play music, I was probably listening to The Runaways. Maybe uh, Pete Townsend, uh, The Empty Glass album, or, um, or a Motley Crue album. I was in my early teens, I had uh, played piano, classical piano, I was forced to take lessons, and when I, uh, when I first heard Sandy West play the drums, then uh, I knew that was it for me, I had to start playing the drums. So, tell me, and your fans and the viewers, who would you all compare yourself to, and what type of genre do you best fit into? I think we compare ourselves mostly to um, uh, early 70s type music. Um, we, we have a lot of comparisons. Barb calls us uh, Rock Redo. Um, I know Len has a lot of influences from the early Led Zeppelin stuff. Uh, but ultimately, um, I agree with Dave, and that is uh, Early Pretenders. Uh, the edginess uh, that the early pretenders had with their with their sound, uh, I think we kind of tend towards that. And then uh, you mix that in with the vocals um, from JT and uh, I'm going to say early pretenders. Uh, a genre? Well, we're, we're a rock band. It's quick. Don't think about this one. What scene in a movie best sums up your all's band's personality? I think it had to be It's a Wonderful Life. And... Um... James Stewart takes out the, the petals from the roses and realizes, oh my gosh, this is real life. 
The scene in the movie that sums up the band's personality would have to be the scene from The Wizard of Oz where Dorothy and her assembled team, her crew, head down the yellow brick road towards Oz. I think the, the analogy is clear here with a strong leader who has the vision and the determination and who has the will to bring this group together and that's JT of course and the rest of us with our various foibles and, and uh, weaknesses uh, are following along with her uh, with hopes of, of achieving something great. I think a lot of rock and roll musicians would probably call on uh, scenes from the great classic uh, uh, This is Spinal Tap but a, a particular one from that movie that resonates with me uh, is where the band members are standing around the grave of Elvis Presley and they're trying to harmonize uh, to Heartbreak Hotel and they're just not getting it. And it's, it's hilarious, it's ludicrous how, how badly they foul up such a simple uh, bit of harmony. And uh, with all due respect to my bandmates who are fantastic musicians, I think anybody who has ever been in a band can identify with that where you're trying to get a sound and you're just not getting it and you're not getting it. Of course, Spinal Tap ended up doing pretty well. They made it really big in Japan, and hopefully so will we. Uh, pretty much any scene out of Spinal Tap, or any scene where you see a bunch of people trying to chase down a runaway horse, or a runaway train, or a chariot, or something like that, that's pretty much the band trying to control our lead singer, Joyce. You know what? Besides playing rock, I really like carving rock. It's all rock. It's all good. Life's good. All right, this question is for every band member that can possibly jump on camera. But I want to know individually, what is your favorite song that you've either played, written, or been a part of, and why? Uh, I think my favorite song would probably have to be a Deep Purple song, and I'm going to say uh, Woman from Tokyo. Uh, I just think that that's a real spacey feel song and a nice little uh, edge to it. Woman from Tokyo. Still has to be Lazy by Deep Purple. Um, you know, I'll answer that from songs that we play, and the one that I like to play the most is Night Turns Into Darkness. Uh, it's one of the band's favorite song, if not the band's favorite song. It's one that came together very easily for us. It almost felt like it wrote itself, and you know, I love the, I love the, the riff in that song, and I get a chance to wind it out a little bit too, and it's a lot of fun to play. I think you can tell the whole band is having fun. Uh, if you ever see us play it. Well, I guess there's no law saying that I can't say two. Uh, I'll take one of ours. I think uh, Night Turns Into Darkness is uh, is probably the nicest piece of writing uh, that Joyce has ever put out. I think it's a gorgeous, tense, dark rock and roll song, and I absolutely love to play it. Uh, with respect to all-time favorite song, I think probably that would be the opening song off of uh, Exile on Main Street by the Rolling Stones, a song called Rocks Off. It's, uh, it's greasy, it's loud, it's somehow simultaneously sloppy but tight. It's uh, it's disrespectful. It's irreverent. It's everything that a good rock and roll song should be. Favorite song? Um, I pretty much like everything that we uh, that we create together as a band. But if I had to pick one from another artist, it would probably be uh, Concrete Blondes. God is a bullet. Inquiring minds want to know, cowbell or no cowbell? Because personally, I can't get enough cowbell. Yes. All right, guys. This is for each band member again to jump on camera. You're stranded on a desert island. You get to take one item besides your instrument of choice. What item is that? Oh, I think I would need a, a, a big metal pot. Um, you could use it to cook in, get water, beat people over the head. A big metal pot would do fine. You know, I guess in a musical contest, uh, context, I'd, I'd want to have my iPod with me with all my Black Sabbath albums and Led Zeppelin and I could listen along and try and, and you know, learn those per parts of the, uh, the songs and the riffs that, that Tony and Jimmy have created so wonderfully all those years ago. As long as it was a nice tropical desert island where there was maybe some wild pigs running around and some fish to catch in the sea, I think I'd probably have to have a really nice barbecue because there's nothing I like better than grilled pork and fish. On a deserted island, if I already had my drums, uh, what other item would I like to have? Uh, it would be a three-way tie between my motorcycle, my hot wife, and my five awesome Siamese cats. A tour bus. Tour bus. Yeah. It's got a lot of stuff in it. What's the last thing that you want to say to your fans? And uh, to make this a little bit more difficult, um, we all know that how important our fans are to us, how important your fans are to you, and how much you appreciate them. So 
besides appreciation and besides thank you, what's the number one thing that you would like to say to your fans? Oh, well, uh, you know, what I'd really like to say to fans is uh, whoever your favorite band is, to support their music and uh, you know go to their shows buy their merch buy their music um, that's the ultimate way that you can support your band and so support your band